Tonight, sell more land, build more houses. The new plan to help ease the housing crisis in the Mid-North. And why a Spencer Gulf senator wants to see political core flutes banned during election campaigns. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with Madeline Kerr begins now. Good evening. Some reprieve for renters and first home buyers could soon be on the horizon amidst the housing shortage in the Mid-North. The state government and local council are preparing to sell more land and in turn build more houses. But the expected influx of workers to the region might be a spanner in the works. It's a problem for both renters and buyers. As of today, there's just three rental properties available in Port Pirie. And even though some new houses are being built, it's not enough to keep up with the demand. The housing market is facing even more pressure, with hundreds of workers expected to descend on Port Pirie for the highway duplication and the construction of a new abattoir. The first thing we need to do is to look at development ready blocks and try and bring them to market as soon as possible. Those are the prime opportunity to look at new build for developing threes, fours, fives, tens of houses at a time to try and drive those economies of scale from a construction perspective. The Regional Development Australia initiative is hoping to hire bigger construction companies to build a lot of houses at once as many of our local tradies have a long backlog of houses to build. All the local tradies are working hard but they are between two and three years booked up for, for many of them. So we really do need some additional boots on the ground to try and get some development happening quickly. Investors are being encouraged to use the new properties for medium and long-term rentals instead of being booked out as a short-term holiday accommodation. There's money to be made, strong yields of between 5 and 8% for gross yields. So there's definitely money to be made and just getting people to understand the this extent of the opportunity and convincing them that now's the time to start developing new stock. Although experts are saying the region's housing shortage will take years to fix. Christian Komenos, 7 Spencer Golf News. With the Easter holidays fast approaching, police across the Spencer Golf are urging drivers to take care on our roads. They're reminding motorists about the fatal five and the loved ones waiting for us at home. It's another plea from our state's police force to motorists. Follow the road rules or risk being another statistic. South Australia Police with the Metropolitan Fire Service teaming up to make Spencer Golf drivers aware of the risks while out travelling. Easter is known as a time when families come together, but unfortunately, historically, it is also a time which has seen great loss and trauma on our roads. According to the latest police statistics, 21 people have already died on South Australian roads. Officers also reinforcing the message that country drivers make up the majority of deaths on country roads. They're asking everyone to not take risks while driving this Easter. Each life lost breaks the hearts of our loved ones and rips the soul out of our communities. But there are things that you can do to be safe this Easter. This includes being aware of the fatal five, speeding, intoxication, not wearing a seatbelt, driver fatigue and distraction. Inspector Andrew Kemp also asking motorists to check if their car is roadworthy by checking lights and the condition of your car's tyres. This year especially, we know that people are going to want to be out and about on the roads this Easter and we are ready. So think about the consequences. More information can be found on SAPOL's website. Mark Zita, 7 Spencer Gulf News. A federal senator from Wyala wants all political parties to commit to a ban on election core flutes in future state and federal election campaigns. Senator Rex Patrick has vowed to not use any core flutes in his Senate campaign in the lead up to next month's election. Mr Patrick says South Australians just had a state election campaign and they now face another tidal wave of visual pollution. He also cites environmental concerns for his push to ban the core flutes. Police in Wyala are asking for the public's help to find a 13-year-old boy who's been missing for almost a month. Jordan Clay was last seen about 8.40pm on Saturday, March 12. Officers still suspect Jordan may be in the Wyala area. He's described as being 165 centimetres tall with a slim build, short brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone who has information on Jordan's whereabouts is urged to contact the police assistance line. 
Still to come tonight, how changing the COVID rules could lead to more flu cases in the Spencer Gulf. And we'll have the highlights from the Silver City's celebration of the Silver Screen, the Perfect Light Festival. Welcome back. Whether we like it or not, this year's flu season is in full swing and local practitioners are now encouraging residents right across the Spencer Gulf to get their flu vax. As COVID restrictions have eased, doctors say they're weary that there'll be a rise in flu cases heading into winter. If the new strains of COVID weren't enough to worry about, we now have to prepare for this year's flu season. Health professionals reminding residents across the Spencer Gulf there is more than just one virus out there. Because COVID shows up, that doesn't mean everything else disappears. And that includes other viruses like influenza. And we've seen a big spike in the fatalities and, and hospitalizations in the UK, um, you know, into their flu season. We would expect the same here. Autumn is the time to think, I've got to get my flu vaccination um, before the winter comes in. And the worst time for flu, of course, is June through to September. So get it, get it before June. Despite a decrease in influenza cases over the past two years, doctors are expecting these numbers to jump as COVID restrictions lift. A lot of that's to do with the fact we've had pretty quiet flu seasons the last two years because we've all been indoors. We haven't been out, there hasn't been the spread of the virus. That will be different now that the world has opened up again. People are eligible to receive both the COVID and influenza vaccine at the same time. They're certainly saying that you can have your flu vaccine and, and your COVID booster together obviously just in different arms, and, uh, and that's quite safe. Anyone aged from six months and older can roll up their sleeves for the influenza jab with the highest level of protection occurring in the first three months. Dr Andrew Rochford also encouraging people to update their My Health records. So basically, the My Health record is your record. It, it, it was created, unless you opted out, it was created to be your digital repository or your filing cabinet, secure space for all your information. It's got past medical history. It's got notes from specialists, uploaded, you know, prescription medication. You can access your health record through the MyGov app or call their helpline on 1800 723 471. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. South Australia police are calling on keen Spencer Gulf residents to sign up to become a police officer. It's part of a new campaign by SAPOL, which will be run between this month until June. Deputy Commissioner Linda Williams says the campaign will target people who are considering a work-life change to have a look at joining the force. More information can be found on SAPOL's website. Drones of film lovers descended on Broken Hill over the weekend in town for the Perfect Light Film Festival. The event not only showcased our local talent, but it was also a celebration of films from across the country and the world. Reporter Josh Mercer went along. Saturday night at the movies. Locals and tourists heading to the Civic Centre to watch filmmaking talent on display. With fun and entertainment had by all. We were very happy with the turnout last night. Uh, the audience was very appreciative. Um, the films were fantastic. Comedy ultimately won the night. Zach Marinin's animal work claimed the top spot, while Broken Hill resident Greta Lee Jackson and comedian Tanya Hennessy took out second prize with hot privilege. Figure out by Zhang Hu Zhang rounding up the top three with a podium finish. I just felt I was belly laughing throughout the whole thing. So that's, that says a lot to get me belly laughing. So, yeah, congratulations to them, to the winners. School of the Air, Broken Hill North Public School and Morgan Street Public also had films shown at the event. The future of filmmaking looking bright in the Silver City. We were stoked to have their entries and uh, they, they were, uh, one of them apparently has already written a sequel so, um, and I know that one of them's purchased some green screen equipment. On Sunday, guest judges Carla Bonner, John Waters and Samuel Johnson got to impart their wisdom on locals interested in acting and filmmaking during some workshops. Give people a first hand glimpse into the world that they might like to inhabit and how it actually works because sometimes it's a bit different to what people might imagine. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. TLC for a Port Lincoln footbridge after decades of neglect. And the Port Pirie Dog Park entering its next phase. Those stories and more are up next.
Welcome back to Seven Spencer Golf News this Monday night. The Port Lincoln Marina footbridge is getting a major revamp. The drawbridge currently serves as a gateway for residents to access the marina, but the new upgrades will aim to make the commute that little bit easier. An iconic part of the marina is set to get a new upgrade. The Port Lincoln Council is now looking for tenders to revamp the local footbridge. We're just about to call for tenders for uh, the rejuvenation of the footbridge going over the marina and um, what we're doing is just basically saying uh, if you're on the tender list and, and you, you want a tender please do so. The drawbridge holding its structure for over 50 years now it's time to improve its operations. This was originally here in, uh, in the original structure of the, of the marina so uh, um, what we've got to do now is make sure that it comes along with the rest of the structures in the marina um, to the best uh, quality that we can have. All upgrades made to the bridge aim to make easier access for boaters to commute to and from the marina. We're looking at upgrading um, the, uh, the engineering side of things uh, to bring that into a modern and modern uh, era, I suppose. And also what we're looking at doing is the balustrading and the signage and the other, other aspects of the bridge. The project is currently out to tender and is estimated to cost $200,000 to complete. The Mayor of Port Lincoln saying locals will have to find an alternative route whilst it's getting built. People uh, from a pedestrian point of view, while we're closing off the bridge, they'll have to actually go around um, the long way. There's nothing that I can do about that. If I can't build another bridge to cover off the bridge that we're fixing. So uh, there may be some inconvenience to pedestrians mainly. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. The new dog park upgrade in Port Pirie has entered its next phase in the development process after Council received more than 60 letters of public consultation. They're now going back to the drawing board to lock in features before the construction begins. It started off as a controversial project for housing development, but the new plan will have everyone's tail wagging. The council has been overwhelmed with feedback, with many people asking for improved fencing around the park and extra lighting so owners can see their pups better at night. And the other interesting components were um, separate areas for large and smaller dogs, which is very interesting to keep the, the two sort of separate in certain areas, so we'll look at that. Um, and obviously there was uh, watering stations for the animals as well. Nothing is set in stone just yet, but those four recommendations are likely to go ahead, with the two separate sections for large and small dogs proving popular with locals. It did figure very highly on the, on the feedback, so it's something that the community feel they need here so we'll definitely look at that and give it some really good consideration. The park could also see a running track and a sand pit for the dogs to play in. It also flags some other items such as you know, exercise equipment for the animals and different bits and pieces there as well so uh, we feel it's going to be a staged approach and if we put some allocation in for next financial year as well we can just chip away at it. And it's good news for the fur babies in Crystal Brook as the council plans to develop a dog park in the unused tennis courts. The first stage of the project is expected to be completed by June with the installation of the new fence and a water station for the dogs. Stay with us after the break. We'll have a wrap on all the Spencer Golf sport that happened over the weekend and we'll have the weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back. South Broken Hill had a weekend to remember, taking out both the men's and the women's Lightning Cup. The pre-season tournament proved to be a good way for players to blow off the cobwebs before the season starts on April 24. Footy is back. AFL Broken Hill holding its annual Lightning Cup at the weekend, with South Broken Hill Kangaroos, the big winners on the day, taking home the cup in both the men's and women's draw. Women's captain Shay Neville happy with the result and to be back playing the game she loves. It's been a good pre-season but it's, it's just awesome to get back into footy. I think we're looking for some colder weather because it's hot today um, but good fun. The win motivating the team to do well this season. It sets us in good seed, it sets us a, it sets a good tone as we move into the early weeks but I think we celebrate hard today um, but then we wipe it and we, we reset um, and we really start to look at how we're going to play structurally. On the men's side of the draw, South won their 11th cup in a row by defeating Central Broken Hill in the final. The Kangaroos coach was happy with the win and giving some of the younger talent game time. It's just uh, good that we had this hit out and see what the other teams are like. And um, yeah, I'm pretty blessed to have a, a very talented side and um, it was just great to see the young kids get a bit of a, a, bit, bit of a touch of the ball today. 
He is also looking forward to seeing how those junior players progress throughout the season, as well as finishing one. You know, it's just footies back home. Let's get a, a season finished this year. And, you know, I think every team, Central's West and North, are the same, that we just want to have a, uh, a season of football um, with no interruptions, interruptions with the COVID. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. Meantime, there was plenty of other sporting action in the Spencer Golf over the weekend. The Wyala Netball Association, for one, had some dominating performances from two of its teams. With all the details, here's Mark Zeta. Netballers across the Spencer Gulf are starting to warm up again for another year on the court. In Wyala, two A-grade matches were played over the weekend. The Warriors defeating their opponents, the Ravens, 53 points to 21. In the other match, Kiwi defeated YCW by a margin of 31 points. Three C-grade matches also went ahead over the weekend in Wyala. Kiwi beating the Ravens 60 points to 21. While it was a close one against Rapina and the Warriors, with only a point separating them at the end. Finally, YCW were able to beat True Blue by 17 points. Moving over to soccer, and in the Football SA State League 2, the Northern Demons beat the Adelaide Cobras by two goals. Joshua Spadavecchia, Giannis Nestoris, and Jacob Sakolaitis scoring one goal each for the winning side. While Perry Mitris was the Cobras' sole goal scorer for the game. Moving over to the Amateur League Division 2, which resumed its season this weekend. Savoy recording a convincing 4-0 win against their opponents, West Beach. Jack Scoot scoring a hat-trick with three goals in his team's victory. That's the wrap of the sports results from the past weekend. If you would like your team to be featured in our next bulletin, let us know through our Facebook page. And the inaugural Teagle Cup isn't too far away, with Norwood and West Adelaide Football Club set to face off on Port Lincoln's Centenary Oval. The two sides will clash on Sunday, April 24, in round four of the Sandful fixture. Many locals... Many local faces will also take to the field with the Norwood Football Club boasting 12 Air Peninsula players on one side. Both teams had a shaky start to the season, losing their first two matches. And tickets can now be bought online from the Norwood Football Club's website. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather with Alex Sykes. Alex, a beautiful day in Port Augusta. That's right, Maddie, and right across our region as well. There is some rain forecast midweek. I'll have more detail on that in just a moment. From 3pm, Port Augusta was sunny and 32. Port Lincoln was cloudy and 19. Woodland was mostly sunny and 29 degrees. Looking further out across the region now, while it was sunny and 25, Broken Hill was 30. Port Puri was sunny and 32. Our friends in Adelaide got to 23. Kadena and Cleve were partly cloudy and 24. Clare was 28. Cooper Pedy reached 36 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, clouds stretching across southern South Australia with a trough and cold front is bringing showers to coastal and adjacent inland areas, mostly clear in the state's interior with a drier air mass. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Southeast to southwesterly winds, 15 to 20 knots, increasing to 20 to 25 knots in the late afternoon. Seas will reach 1 to 1.5 metres, increasing to 1.5 to 2 metres in the early evening and south to southwesterly swells below 1 metre. It'll be cloudy in Port Lincoln tomorrow with 22 degrees. Cleve will be partly cloudy and is set to reach a high of 25 degrees. Woodner will get to a high of 34. Partly cloudy in Wyla with 28. Port Augusta will be mostly sunny and is set to reach 34 degrees there. Kadena to reach 29. Port Pier will be mostly sunny and 30. Three Clare to top 27 and across the border in Broken Hill it'll be sunny and 29 degrees there. Taking a look further through the week now, Wyla and Kadena both set to reach 30 degrees on Wednesday. Partly cloudy in Port Lincoln with 25. Port Augusta will be mostly sunny and 34. A degree warmer in Woodno where it'll be partly cloudy. Sunny in Broken Hill with 25 degrees and Cooper Pedy will have a top of 36. Let's take a look at Thursday now. There will be a shower or two in Woodno where it'll get to 29. Partly cloudy in Port Augusta with 33. Port Pirie to reach 30 degrees. Wyler and Adelaide both set to reach 27. A shower or two in Port Lincoln with 25 degrees. Similar conditions in Kadena with 28. 
To Friday now and those showers will have cleared with partly cloudy conditions expected across the region. Port Augusta and Broken Hill are both to reach 29 degrees, 23 degrees in Port Lincoln, Wyla and Kadena both set to top 26. Cooper Pedy will have 31 degrees and Port Puri will get to a max of 28. Hopefully the rain stays away on the weekend, Manny, and that's all the weather from me for tonight. It's back to you. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Monday. I'm Madeline Kerr. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. But until then, enjoy your evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.